Hi and welcome again to Learning AutoCAD 2013. We will focus today in preparing for printing or plotting. In our last video we explained how to create and use annotative styles and dimension our floor plan in full. But now we will take the next step visiting some of the basic features to create viewports, adjust our planning paper with different scales and prepare for printing. This tutorial has been created by EasyCAD for you. Just remember to rate the video and share if you enjoy. We left here the drawing in our model space ready to plot or print in paper. So our next step is switching to paper or layout tabs to start preparing for printing. Each CAD drawing by default will have two layout tabs, but we can add as many as we want. Printing will require at least a decent amount of pre-planning, so at this point you should have a clear idea of what you want and how you want your final plot presented. Either way, we now first will select our paper size. Again, the default paper size in CAD is the regular sheet of paper 8.5 inches by 11 and soon you'll realize that for professional purposes this is useless so we will change it to a bigger one in order for us to do that we position our mouse on top of the layout we are in in this case on top of layout 1 and right click if by any chance you don't do it on top of it it will give you the regular right click menu but if you did it right it will give you this menu from here, you can access options specifically applied to paper, like the first one, New Layout. However, we will select Page Setup Manager over here. Once it's clicked, it will take us to this dial box with the same name. In the lower area, we'll see the specifications of our sheet of paper. So, among the settings, we see the size of our uh, layout that it is landscape oriented, uh, that it has no name, etc. In the upper area, we have a, a list of the layouts in the drawing. In our case, we only have two. So we select the one we'll work with, and although we can create a new one from scratch, we'll click Modify on the right. This will take us to the page setup for that specific layout we're modifying. Now, inside the page setup window, we can modify the layout settings. As you see, we have some sections, but the first one we'll visit is paper size. We will click the drop down menu and it gives us several options. In our case, we'll select Architectural D, which has a size of 36 inches by 24. And here on the right, we have a preview of it. Before modifying all the things, let's see how this changed our paper size. So let's accept and close. Now this is the result. Our paper grew roughly three to four times bigger. Now the challenge is accommodating our drawing to the paper size. And we do it through the viewport, which is identified by this blue rectangle around the drawing. We select it first and then click on top of one of the grips or these little blue squares. Now you see the prompt indicating to specify the stretch point. So click for the second time near the dash lines on the opposite corner. So you see I'm zooming in to get it as close as possible. By the way, the dash lines indicate the printable area in your paper. So we want to stay close but inside of it. Now, down here on the right, in the status bar, we have this button that says Paper. By clicking it, you will toggle between Model and Paper Space. When we select Model, it will allow us to use a viewport scale for our drawing on paper. So it will give us a set of predefined scales to use in the button with the same name. So pull the menu and here we have them. Now, although you can select whatever you want, I'll select for my floor plan a quarter of an inch equal one foot, as my drawing title indicates. And now, of course, we have to accommodate the drawing within the space we have. As you see, I'm placing it more or less towards the left 
to make room for other viewports as well on the right to show some details later on. Now, let's go back to set up all the things we also need for printing. Right-click again on top of the name of the layout, in this case number one, select again Page Setup Manager, and choose to modify the layout one. Now, we have from top to bottom on the left some options. The first one is Name, and we haven't named it yet, so it says None. The next one is Printer Plotter, and here the menu basically gives us some CAD options for printing along with any other printers we might have or have had in the computer. In other words, chances are that you will not see the same options I have here. Now, just make sure that your selection will support the paper size you're uh, using. So, because none of these printers I have here support a 36 inches by 24 uh, format, I will use the DWG to PDF option. So, basically, this will allow me to have a PDF from my drawing and later on I can print it somewhere else. Now, right below the paper size, we have the option of plot area or basically what to plot. Normally, we plot the layout, but as you can see, we can specify a portion of the drawing by selecting Window option, or Print Everything if you use Extend, or whatever we have in display if that option gets selected. Depending on the option you choose, the system might prompt you for additional steps, but in our case, we leave it to print just the layout. The next one, Plot Offset, we normally don't touch it here and right on the right we have plot scale which usually we keep at 1 equals 1 because we already pre-selected the scale we wanted now on the right the drawing orientation section this is self-explanatory but above it we have some additional plot options we check or uncheck here the ones we prefer based on our needs so, for example, normally we want our line weights to show. And if we have assigned any transparency value to one of our objects, you might want to check that option too, but we haven't. The next one, plot with plot styles, refers to whatever plot style we select up here. So, we will talk about this in a second. For now, we'll skip it. Paper space last. When checked means that your objects in paper will always plot on top. So if you create an object in paper and when you're plotting it is not showing, the reason might be that this here is unchecked. So you might, you might want to go back and double check if this is okay. And finally, hide paper space objects refers to any objects you might have in paper only rather than in model space. So, when to use it, this is completely up to you. I'll leave it on check for now. Now, right above this, we have the shaded viewport options, which mainly applies to 3D. So, we will skip it for now. And on top of it, we have the plot style table section, and this refers to a collection of property settings which we can use when the drawing gets printed. If you decide not to use the plot style table, your drawing will print with the same properties and colors they have on the screen. So everything will print exactly as displayed. This is not professional at all, because in plants normally you use line weights and line types among other settings to indicate features in the construction or objects you're drawing. Therefore, most people will use a standardized way of printing in CAD, regardless of the way in which objects are displayed on screen. This standard gives us full control to communicate what we want with our plans. This standard is what we call plot styles table. The default in CAD is color-dependent plot styles, identified here for the CTB extension at the end, but we can also specify name plot style tables with our STB extension. The main difference between the two is that in a color dependent plot style table, you force objects to plot 
based on their colors. For instance, let's say all red objects in your drawing will print with pre-selected values in terms of the color, the line weight, the line type, etc. While yellow ones will have different values or characteristics, and the same applies for all colors. On the other hand, in a name plot style table, you force the objects to print based on the values you assign to specific layers or objects. With this style, it does not matter what color the objects are or even what layer they are on. Name plot styles can be attached to specific objects or layers, so if a style is assigned to an object, it will override the layer settings. And the good news is that CAD have plenty of options and chances are that the company you are or you will work for will have its own style. So here we have the option to specify which one we'll use. You are more than welcome to try some of these. In our case, let's use the gray scale, which is one of the defaults. And finally, we have this checkbox here, display plot styles that basically gives us the option to see in our sheet of paper our plot style, our selected plot style table in action. So let's click OK and then close the manager. Now we will focus on a couple of details, so let's rearrange our existing viewport to make room for the other two. Select the viewport and using this grip, just stretch it up to here. Now we will create two new viewports and for that we go to layout tab, then layout viewport module, and then here we have in this menu three options to create a new viewport. We can use an existing object to create it from it, or we can create a polygonal one, in which case we have to draw it. In our case, we'll use the simplest one with option rectangular. After selecting it, we're prompted to click the first corner. So we click here to coincide with our existing one. Then it asks for the other corner, so click more or less here at the middle on the other end. Immediately, we have everything in our drawing displaying within the viewport. Now, let's create another one at the bottom right corner and use both corners from the two existing ones. Now, we have three floor plans in our paper and we want to show in the newly created ones a couple of details. Let's click the bottom to toggle between model and paper space down here. Now see that although this indicates we are in model space, only one is the active viewport and you select it by clicking inside the one you want to work with. Another option is to use Ctrl R to change between those. Now let's zoom in to the kitchen on the one on top and specify a scale of 3 quarters of an inch equal one foot. For the one at the bottom, we will select half of an inch equal one foot. And then move it to locate the bathroom. Now we have three different viewports with three different scales in our papers. Since we don't have title for the ones at the right, let's go to tool palettes and get it from the annotations tab here for both viewports. Now, modify the scales and the names as you already know. Remember we did this in the previous video. Assign the appropriate names and scales to them, but notice that, that the one for the floor plan has been drawn in the model space, while these two are actually in paper space. At this point, we're ready to print or plot. However, we all agree that although this is a very basic plan or concept, we still might be able to do a couple of additions, so our plan looks a little bit more professional. So for our next tutorial, we'll add to this plan a title block and we'll brand it. Also, we'll see how to use external references, also known as XREFs, and import other objects. Finally, we will print our plan to get the final product. Well, friends, this is pretty much it for now. Remember to like the video and subscribe for more. Also, you're more than welcome to share it in the social media. 
If you happen to have any questions, feel free to post them and we will do our best to help you out. Again, thanks for watching and see you next time.